Management Officer at the Patient-Centered Outcomes Research Institute, uh, PCORI. And as you know, we were awarded the, the engagement award by PCORI to bring all the families together. So in be, on behalf of the Tango 2 community, I really sincerely thank Denise representing PCORI today for us. And uh, Denise has now, by now, probably seen how important it is for these families to come together to find this platform to share ideas, um, to share their questions. So um, in this session, Denise will help us uh, uh, understand the meaning of patient-centered outcomes research uh, and how families can be partners in research to move forward uh, in, re uh, in Tango to research specifically. So I'll hand this over to Denise. Hi, everyone. So, um, I know there's still people trickling in. That was a very short break. Um, I'm going to try to uh, get through a lot of material in a very short period of time, but also to help set the stage for the workshop that I'm going to be doing after lunch. Um, and I'm kind of calling that the unconference, where we flip it, where all of you become the driver's seats and then you present back to us because this is about building a foundation, a strong foundation for moving research forward. This isn't just a one, event, you know, one time event. This is a event that will launch an entire research agenda. And so the, the patient voices, the, the parent partners, are, are very critical and important in that. Um, so what is patient-centered outcomes research? Before I get into that, I want to do a quick introduction of who I am and what I do at PCORI. Um, and I'm an engagement officer. Uh, my job is kind of a rarity in the world of health research. Um, we are specifically tasked for making sure that there are partners at the table in research because so much scientific research gets done in a bubble. It's, dis it's very disconnected from the people who are living with the problem every single day. And if we really are trying to make lives better, helping people live the best life possible, we have to start understanding the problem from that perspective. Um, so that is, you know, a big part of my role is to make sure that the different voices, patients, caregivers, and stakeholders are brought to the health research table in a way that is very meaningful and helpful. Um, and just to let you know that rare disease is not my area of expertise, but it is something that is very close to me. Uh, when I was asked to come and speak today, um, this was several months ago, I was like, what rare disease? And then I was like, this is personal. My best friend's child was born with mitochondrial disease. He's now 13 years old. Um, and my family. Um, my grandmother had 13 children. 11 of them are boys. Um, and five of them actually have a very rare disease and were part of a study 25 years ago. Um, of those five boys, one of them is my father. Um, so this is something that, you know, is, is, is very uh, close. That, that particular study only had 17 subjects enrolled. Five of those subjects were from my immediate family, my father and some of my uncles. So I, I'm sharing this personal story with you because sometimes research starts out very, very small. And researchers are dependent upon the, the leveraging these networks of families. And you have the benefit of the internet now. 25 years ago, Facebook didn't exist to help people get to talking. Uh, we actually found a, another leg or arm of our family tree that this disease also showed up in. So it's just part of my aunt being curious about building out the family tree. So, so discovery and information comes to us in, in different ways. Um, so I'm going to talk a little bit, make sure you understand who PCORI is and what it is we do. PCORI stands for Patient-Centered Outcomes Research Institute. Um, we exist because of the most basic level is to make research findings more useful and usable for those who need it. That includes researchers, that building of knowledge, it includes clinicians of, I have these patients and I need information 
to help them and patients and families saying, we need help, we need help here. And research findings and discoveries aren't very helpful when they're just buried in a journal somewhere on a, a library shelf, right? It's also getting that information out there into the world in a way that can actually be used by the people who need it. Um, most of the time I, I, I'm presenting at conferences where I'm dealing with a lot of researchers and, and physicians and people who are skeptical about the, the patient partnership and stakeholders coming to the table. Uh, how do you uphold the rigors of science when you have all these other people who are not trained as scientists coming to the table, right? So. I, I don't I feel like I need to really talk to that in this audience um, because now it's really about flipping it and it's like you're the ones who, who are making these observations, you're the ones who are going to inform the researchers. Um, and the fact that SEMA has already applied for this grant or this, this contract, this uh, award, um, to bring everybody together for this, um, it, it, I don't have to do a whole lot of work to convince the scientists leading this effort that the patients are very, very important partners and are, are going to help build this research and these findings. Um, so PCORI, this is our real quick um, required slide. So we are an independent research institute. We were authorized by Congress in 2010, and we are governed by 21 member board of governors representing the entire healthcare community. Um, so while we are funded by Congress, we kind of are standalone. So we are not a government agency, but we do work in partnership with other government agencies such as the NIH and AHRQ. Um, we fund comparative clinical effectiveness research, which short is just referred to as CER, that engages patients and other stakeholders throughout the research process. And what we mean by CER is comparative effectiveness research is this has been proven to work, this has been proven to work. Now let's compare and figure out which one works better. Um, and, and as you know, in just, you know, just regular healthcare interventions, oftentimes what a doctor prescribes is based on his preference or her preference versus that it actually does work better. It just happens to be a preference or that's what is available in that particular geography because of that particular medical center or the uh, insurance company that that's what they pay for, not this one. Um, and we also seek to answer real-world questions that work best for patients based on their circumstances and concerns. Uh, just the last presentation, some of that has already started in those, those conversations and those questions being asked. So it is our mandate that we work for decision makers. We don't work for publications. We work for helping the decision makers make best choices and better choices. Um, and when we talk about who decision makers are, we are talking about patients, clinicians, purchasers, policy makers. Um, all of those folks who actually have a role in figuring out what is the information I need so that way I can make the de best decision, either for my patient, for my child, for myself. And the Tango 2 researchers who need to make these decisions about researchers, about research, they're also decision makers, right? Um, they need more information. Clinicians need more information. And patients need more information. And when we talk about stakeholders, the people who are at the table, this is kind of a snapshot of all those different stakeholders, voices, perspectives that are very important to building a PCOR research agenda, the patient-centered outcomes research. Um, these stakeholders are helpful to us in multiple ways. Um, we, we practice this at PCORI ourselves, um, not just ex the expectation that the awards that we fund do this, but we have patients and other stakeholders at the table with us through advisory panels. They, uh, we bring in folks to help us decide what are our priorities for funding. 
um, help us make decisions about the applications that we receive. So we have a merit review process that isn't just a bunch of you know, scientific experts sitting in a room talking about that application. There are also patients and other stakeholders who are part of that review process, including clinicians who can bring that perspective of, this is what we still don't know, and I'm not sure this is the type of research that gets to the type of questions that need to be answered, asked, and hopefully answered at this point. Or the research design is great, but in the real world of how healthcare gets practiced and how we interact with those patients and families, this research might not actually work in the real world. We also involve them in the process of reviewing the results. Are these results good? Are they helpful? Can they be used? And then also, how do we share these results? So that way it gets to the people who need that information. The, and again, the patients, the families, the clinicians, and ideally that information being taken up and, and put into practice. That might be also reaching out to the insurers and the, the, the administrators, uh, medical directors. So patient-centeredness, it's not just part of the name of our organization, it is core to our mission. And this is also core to your mission, why you're here today. Um, and patient-centeredness, um, this is just real quick, you know, the difference between patient-centeredness and then also engagement. A lot of times people get those two things confused. Patient-centeredness is that what we are doing is for the patient, right? The questions and outcomes that matter to patients, that matter to families. How do I live my best life given the circumstances? Um, and then research reflects what is important to the patients and caregivers, not research that reflects a research question that is important to the scientist. Um, oftentimes, you know, it, it's a science, a scientist approach this of, you know, I, I'm asking this question, and often the, the guiding question is, will this be publishable? Will this help me get tenure? Where we kind of push beyond that, and start asking the ultimate question of, will this help people live better lives? The patient and stakeholder engagement process is important to that, because how do you start understanding the problem if you're not talking to the people who are living with it every single day? Uh, patients are contributors to research, not just research subjects. So that is a huge break from how re health research has traditionally been done. And then there's the active involvement between scientists, patient caregivers, and all the other stakeholders. It's not always easy, um, but we're committed to this. Corey's mission, we do believe that we are making a difference. Uh, we are the only research agency specifically charged to look for these differences in treatment response between, among patients. One of the challenges of working with rare disease is what are the treatment options? What are the responses? Um, have the, you know, has efficacy been proven? What evidence really exists? And when I say efficacy, that simply means does it work? Where comparative effectiveness is this works, this works, which works better? Um, so part of that process is also working on that efficacy so that you have the evidence so you can start comparing the interventions and the evidence and building that. Um, we require research studies, again, to be patient-centered. We aim to generate more useful and usable evidence, and that is something that I pound on all the time because evidence, if it's just in a book, if it's just a bunch of data but it can't be used, it's not useful in our world of PCOR. Um, we expect awardees to actively engage patients and caregivers. Um, and, 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 and that's part of why we fund the, uh, the, the, these conferences, is that to start having the conversations. Um, we put a high focus on high priority conditions. And this snapshot slide 
Um, and it, usually this presentation is about an hour long, and so I had to condense it real quick um, and, and, and really make it relevant for all of you sitting here uh, versus the, the, the typical audience who receives a lot of this information. Um, affecting large numbers of people across a range of population. Well, we know that rare disease isn't one of those. Um, it places a heavy burden on individuals, families. And rare disease does that. And so that's why we include rare disease. And we also recognize that rare disease is very, very difficult to study. Uh, the Engagement Award that funded is, is one of our programs which funded everybody to come here today. This is a convening. It is a beginning. It is not an end. Um, oftentimes, you know, these, these conference awards are to actually disseminate results and findings. This is a, 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 a unique opportunity and that this is a newly diagnosed condition. And so this is like a, a, an opportune moment in history to be able to bring together patients and families with the researchers at the very, very, very start of building a research agenda. And that's one of the reasons why PCORI funded this. It's rare, this is a rare opportunity uh, for, for these conversations to start taking place. Um, and, and when you think about building a research agenda with all of these different voices at the table, you know, the, the, the rigors of science must still be upheld. That's the value of the scientists and the clinicians, the people who work with the data. Um, you know, they bring the technical skill and the expertise to the table. And you have to uphold the rigors of science because if you don't do that, you just end up with a lot of data. You don't necessarily end up with evidence that passes the sniff test of science but at the same time bringing in the human experience. These are the observations that we're making. This is what we see every day with our child. This is important. Uh, the clinician who starts piecing together something of like, wait a minute, I noticed this with this child and I noticed this with this patient. What, what lines up? And that, that's, what we talk about of building evidence, building the knowledge base. And sometimes when you start doing that, you know, the, the, the efficacy studies, does it work? Sometimes you find it doesn't. It worked for this person, and then it gets tested on other folks, and it's like, well, that didn't necessarily work. <laughs> but that is also an important part of the scientific process and that developing and building knowledge of what doesn't work because that's what helps also get you closer to recognizing what does. I've kind of skipped around a little bit um, in my notes and my presentation. Um, so I introduced the basic concept of CER, the Comparative Effectiveness Research. Um, PCOR is a type of CER, it's a new type of CER. And when I say PCOR, Patient-Centered Outcomes Research. And this is where instead of just scientists saying, I want to compare this to this to see which works better, it's that we want to compare this to this to see which works better, but for whom and under what circumstances. We have a global audience in this room. So the circumstances could be uh, urban versus rural, right? The environmental things where People live in, in heat. That might actually have a different intervention eventually versus somebody who lives in a cold climate. These are the things, the unknowns, we don't know. And so we have to start asking those questions. And, and, and you're the ones who are bringing those type of observation to the table. Um, and then again, helping us make the better informed decisions. Impact of engaging stakeholders in research. PCORI funding, we really truly believe that we are starting to drive change in research because we have started to see other agencies, other funders say, we want patient partners coming to the table. They oftentimes reach out to us and say, but we don't know how to get started. We don't know how to do this. And we have researchers who are afraid of that. 
um, because it is, you still have to uphold the rigors of science while bringing in the human experience, the observations, the people who might actually challenge you to change the research question entirely. Um, I know that with a rare disease, you know, you, you want a cure. And that research will be carried out. But when you're talking about patient-centered outcomes research, it's really about quality of life. That's a different line of inquiry. And these lines of inquiry are going to be taking place at the same time where cure takes place in a lab and quality of life takes place in the real world. Um, engagement, which is this, this right here is engagement. And when we get to the workshop, it, again, we are going to flip it upside down where you become the drivers of the conversation. I'm just going to be facilitating it and giving you, know, giving you some starting questions. And then you bring the, what I like to call the do's, o's, and ahas to us. The do's are those things of like, well, I didn't. I did not know that. It was right in front of my face. And that happens in the world of research a lot. You know, people, their heads are down and they're really focused on the work, right? That they miss the things that are so completely obvious. Um, I, 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 an example of that is, you know, when you have, you're looking everywhere for your glasses, right? And you take somebody else, they walk into the room, and they're like, they're on top of your head. Oh, right? Uh, the O's are just that simple, like, like Here's what, here's how this plays out in everyday life. The clinician and the researcher are not living with you. They're not next to you every day, 24 hours a day. So you can provide the O's, the important stuff that they really need to know about. And the, the, the ahas, hopefully that's the scientific process. That aha, we've got it. We've got something. Um, Engagement can influence the value of research, the relevance of research, and the utility of research. Um, but it cannot address everything. It simply cannot solve all problems. Um, and and, and it's, you know, there's going to be these inherent trade-offs in the research process, in the, the partnering with researchers, and, and coming to the table as contributors and full partners in this process. Um, because research can't necessarily do everything um, at the same time. But what it can do, the engagement process, we have found that it increases the acceptability of a study, meaning this research is wanted and it's valued, it's going to be helpful. It increases the feasibility, it can increase the feasibility of a research study, that this can actually really be done. We just got to work through some of these things to figure out how, how it can be done. It actually has been proven to sometimes uphold the rigor of the process. Um, you know, oftentimes it's other researchers who come to the table as stakeholders, not just a member of that research team. And then also the relevance of that this is something I can use. This is something that is helpful. This is something that starts building knowledge and capacity. And again, this conference is part of this, is the starting point for all of that. This is a study profile um, that did come out of a rare disease. It's very different than this one. Um, but I wanted to share this with you um, just so you can kind of get a sense of what a CER PCOR study looks like that is funded uh, by PCORI. Um, it did start with an engagement process. It started with an engagement award. And through that engagement award, that group of researchers, along with the patients, developed a research question that they wanted to study. Um, and it, there was a patient advisory panel, and on the study, there's also a, a study advisory committee that, that guides this work. Um, and it's basically a head-to-head -head comparison. This works, this has been proven to work, which one works better? And why do patients care, right? Like, you would think, oh, okay, two antibiotics versus three antibiotics. But then when you start talking to the patients, there's, side effects, there's the burden of the regimen that they have to, to take. And so figuring out which one actually works best 
and is the most tolerable for patients. And patients have been very helpful in informing that. Um, this, this is ultimately the goal of your group is to get to that. Um, recognizing the treatments and then starting to determine which ones work best. I want to start um, this last slide, and I, I need to do a time check. Oh, I'm at five minutes. Um, building capacity for Tango 2 research. So there's these conference schools um, that I worked with uh, SEMA on, on really making sure that I understood the goals of the conference so that way I could design a workshop that helps move in the direction of the goals of the conference. So right after lunch, I'm going to also be facilitating workshop one. And this is some of those fundamental conversations. Um, you, it, when you have a bunch of people with different perspectives coming to the table, you have to recognize that maybe everybody does not operationalize a word the same way. Research means something very different to a researcher, perhaps, than to a parent, right? So getting on a, a kind of common ground of how you understand the world, how the word, how you operationalize it, so that way when you're talking to each other, you really truly are having the, the, the conversation that needs to take place. Um, helping establish the common ground so all of you can start working together towards the goals, and then starting to define those goals and what success really truly will look like for Tango to PCOR, Patient-Centered Outcomes Research. Um, and uh, So I wanna wrap up with just kind of Think about this as a marriage between science and the human experience. And I've never been married, but I know it can be kind of challenging at times, right? You got to work through things. There's some, you know, well, trade-offs and compromise. Um, and, and think about it of, you know, I know that sometimes you have fights about what you're going to have for dinner, right? Is it, are you going to go out for dinner or are you going to cook? Everybody's hungry, right? And if you decide to stay in and cook, well, what do you have in the cabinet? What do you have in the pantry? Um, and, and then figuring out, like, okay, what do we make that's gonna make us kinda happy here? That's going to not just fill our hunger, but also be pleasant and enjoyable. Um, and I'm using this analogy because I think, you know, we're all hungry for knowledge, especially in the world of rare disease. Um, and what we don't want to do is just have a scientist come and say, here's what's for dinner. Or a clinician come and say, here's what for, what's for dinner, and I don't care if you don't like it. It's that you're at the table and you have a say, and I want the knowledge and the information and the type of treatment that is useful and usable, therefore likable, versus just put upon you. So you're part of the creating of the menu in a way. You're part of that determining uh, what ingredients. You're part of determining is this going to be a quick one, uh, you know, one entree or is this going to be a five course meal? Okay. Um, and, and we'll start working on that at the workshop. I don't know if that analogy really worked very well. When I was thinking through it, I'm like, oh, this is a good analogy, but then people are kind of looking at me. Um, so I was like, hmm, okay, mental note, maybe I won't use this one again. Um, or I'll work on it a little bit more. On that, I know I've only got about a minute and a half, but I will take a few quick questions and also, I just want to say that there's a couple of parents in this room that I am going to tap your shoulder for the workshop, if you are willing to let me tap the shoulder, because I want to be able to get a read of the room. I want to be able to adjust. We can speed things up. We can slow this down. You're going to be the ones in the driver's seat. I'm just going to kind of be the traffic cop and kind of, you know, making sure the guardrails are up. But ultimately, you're going, when you come back from lunch, be ready to be the leaders. Okay, so thank you. Any questions? I think my alarm's about to go off. Ah. Hi, thanks for your talk. I was just wondering whether me as a basic scientist, I, I have faced some of your, the questions you, you ask, 
but I wonder what is the role of basic science in the patient-centered outcome research, if there is one at all? Science is the foundation, right? Without the science, we can't actually conduct patient-centered outcomes research. So science remains very, very important, the rigors of science. Um, and I, I'm not a scientist, I'm a social scientist, so um, I want to make sure that I am understanding your question specifically, and uh, let me dismiss my alarm. I, I set my alarm so I wouldn't go over. So when you're asking about the basics of science, you're talking about more of the, the genetic studies? Okay. Uh, yeah, I, I, I feel very ill-equipped to answer that question as I am not a genetic scientist. So um, but I, I think this is something that we can actually work out in the <laughs> workshop. Like, what is the role of basic science for building PCOR for Tango 2 research? That, that is part of the discovery. Yeah. So you're, 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 you're going to um, tackle that question in the <laughs> workshop. <laughs> Well, I, I have a question regarding uh, the, the scientist data and the, the best treatment for, for the patients, but do you ever factor in cost as best treatment and availability to, I mean, because this is a, a lot of these patients see multiple doctors, they take multiple treatments, multiple medications. How do you determine that? I and mean, there's different social classes. This is a global disease. Uh, it's just something that, that I thought has a lot of details that, that need to be filled in. I really appreciate that question. PCORI does not fund cost-effectiveness research. Um, that's a very different type of economic type of research. Um, but when you're talking about the cost burden of the disease and the treatments to the family, that's actually part of the, the PCORE research question of like, what works for whom under what circumstances? And when we say what circumstances, that can take into, into play those issues of you know, urban versus rural. So uh, sometimes the intervention will be a telehealth versus an in-office intervention. Um, and then also the socioeconomics. Can people afford this? Um, and, 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 th and that becomes a different question for the patients and families that they have to work with their clinicians on. And then also that's one of the reasons why we have payers and health systems come to the table as stakeholders because they oftentimes will be the ones also working with the issues of cost. So it, it, it is something that's very important and that that's where the you know patients and stakeholders can also provide very meaningful input of yeah this is a great treatment but I, it's not feasible for my family so what are the alternatives yeah i just have to jump in you mentioned payers um, as a stakeholder in this and they certainly are and they've got a lot of data a lot of data that can be used for research and from my understanding, they're really not able to do that. Um, so where is PCOR, <clears throat> PCOR in helping us patients get others to participate in research, whether it be the payers or hospitals or even EMR vendors that can share amongst themselves, that have that capability, but won't for research purposes? Yeah. Uh, we are actually hosting a series of payer forums. Um, it, it's handled by another arm of, of the department that I work in, um, but they are actually bring, assembling all of these different payers uh, for different forums to start tackling exactly that. And some of it too, you know, the, the issues of you know, data security and, 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 and patient privacy issues. You know, the whole health healthcare system and regulatory world is, is working through those, those issues. But it, it's not easy. Again, that's one of those things of like, this, this can be contentious work, but we all have to show up to the table to work through that to figure out how do we do this and do it well. All right, thank you so much, Denise. Okay, thank you.